In this video, I will be going over the biology and batch relationship of the threadfin shad. So they grow to about seven inches max, but they average about three inches. They have that long last dorsal ray. That's a good identifier that gives it its name, the threadfin shad. They also have those ventral scoots that gizzard shad have. They have to be swallowed head first in most cases. Their fins have this yellowish tint. They're silvery white ventrally with mixes of green, blues, and yellow dorsally. They have this dark spot, which a lot of people claim is a false eye spot. So when the, when the predator aims at the fish, it wants to aim for the eye because it has to be swallowed head first. So if, but if it aims for this false eye that's further back, it has a chance of missing it, which gives the threadfin shad a better survival chance. They eat mostly plankton, and within plankton they eat mostly zooplankton, those little invertebrates that suspend in the water column. They mostly live in the southern United States where water temps doesn't get below 40 degrees. You know, those fish kills happen once the entire water column gets below that 40 degree range. They like a wide range of water clarity and lake types. As long as that temperature stays good, they can really survive in any body of water that has at least a little bit of current and nutrients. They are pelagic, feeding on the suspended plankton in open water. They spawn in late spring when that water temps around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Usually that's April or May. And they also spawn periodically during the summer. They lay their adhesive eggs on cover. So during the spawn, usually at night or very early in the morning, you'll see them in their school bumping up against each other and also bumping up against cover, the bank, laydowns, docks, rocks, grass, anything that those adhesive eggs can stick to. They form those huge, dense, large schools. You'll see them sometimes at night. You'll see them large expanses of surface activity, them flickering on the surface or on your graph. You'll just see a big wad of bait fish. Those are threadfin shad. They live to about four years max. So bass relation, they're a good food source for those one to three pound large mouth, I'd say, and pretty much all spotted bass because of their small mouths. They, uh, so bass could, they have two options. They could either ambush them, set up on those high spots, ridges, out on tops of brush piles, and ambush balls of bait fish when they swim by, or they could also be pelagic in open water and follow them around and periodically push them against the surface and feed on them. So wind really influences the threadfin shad behavior because wind pushes those the zooplankton that they eat. So if wind is pushing up against a bank, or pushing into a pocket, it's pushing those zooplankton up into those places, and that's what threadfin shad eats, so they'll follow them, and the bass will follow the shad. You might have noticed that threadfin shad are active near the surface at low light, and this is because of the diurnal vertical migration of zooplankton. Zooplankton have recognized that they have a better chance of survival if they if they feed on phytoplankton at on low light because they're less likely less likely to get preyed upon so threadfin shad follow those zooplankton at low light so the diurnal vertical migration is every night zooplankton rise to the surface to feed so in low light threadfin shad also follow them so some typical baits that you could use to imitate a threadfin shad is honestly a lot, a lot of baits that are out there on the market, though, because there's a lot of baits that are in that two to four inch range. But to name a few, crankbaits, like a square bill, swim baits, pretty much any Kai Tech from a 2.8 to probably a 4.8. An A rig imitates a school of threadfin shad phenomenally, and top water, of course, you know, those spook type baits. If you were to get one thing from this video, is that threadfin shad are pelagic. They're constantly moving, they're in that open water, and bass are setting up and looking into the abyss, if you will, waiting for those schools to swim by and, and ambush them.